Venerable religious and dear parishioners, I would like you to imagine something right now. As we know, the universe had a beginning. There was a time, if we can put it this way, that nothing existed except for God. And it's, and it's a little bit difficult to do because time began when creation began. So it's a little bit difficult to say, imagine what it was like before time began. But that's what we're trying to do. Nothing existed. None of the millions of galaxies, nothing material existed. This was even before the angels were created. Nothing existed except for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So imagine that. Nothing existing except for Almighty God. And this is one of, of course, the, the greatest mysteries of our Catholic faith, that there are three persons and yet only one God. I find it interesting that today we have the two, you might say the shortest epistle and gospel of the year. And yet we're reflecting upon the greatest thing of all, the infinitude or the infinity of God. That he always was, always is, and always will be. As a matter of fact, we can't even really use the word was or will be because God lives in this eternal present. Very foreign to us because we only think in terms of time passing, succession of events, and yet in God there's no such thing because there's no change in God. So from all eternity... Before anything was, the Father was eternally begetting the Son and the Holy Ghost was proceeding from the Father and the Son. This is the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Out of God's goodness, he created us. He did not have to. This world does not have to be. There's no intrinsic reason why there absolutely has to be this earth or the billions of people that have inhabited it or, as I said, any of the millions of galaxies, the planets, the stars. None of it has to exist. But God brought it into existence out of his goodness and he created the material world for us to use, for us to enjoy, for us to reflect upon that it is a creature of God. We also reflect today that from all eternity, fatherhood has existed. In time, motherhood was made, and as we know how wonderful that is. God wanted to have a mother too, and he created his mother. But that began in time. Fatherhood, and this is something especially for fathers to reflect upon, that fatherhood has existed eternally in God. What an awesome thing it is to be a human father or to be a spiritual father such as priests are because it is a reflection of that infinite thing that's been going on, the Father begetting the Son. I know these are very deep thoughts, and, and no wonder St. Paul tells us in Romans, you know, oh, how the, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God, how incomprehensible are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways You know, you, when you start meditating on these great truths regarding the Holy Trinity... You get, you get can get overwhelming, and you just realize there's so much there. How can I ever comprehend it? Of course, we never can. We can learn more about it, but 
you know, we'll never fully understand it, but we adore the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I wanted to share with you a part of the Athanasian Creed, and this is one of the most magnificent expressions of belief in the Holy Trinity. It's if not written by St. Athanasius, at least written in reference to him. And remember, he was one of the greatest champions of believing in the Holy Trinity. Remember, at his time, St. Athanasius lived at a time where the worst heresy was ravaging the church, Arianism. And Arius said... The Son is not God, nor would the Holy Ghost be God. A, an absolute denial of the Holy Trinity. And just hearing these words helps us to understand a little bit more this awesome doctrine of the three in one. Whoever wishes to be saved must, above all, keep the Catholic faith, for unless a person keeps his faith whole and entire, he will undoubtedly be lost forever. This is what the Catholic faith teaches. We worship one God in the Trinity and the Trinity in unity. We distinguish among the persons, but we do not divide the substance. For the Father is a distinct person, the Son is a distinct person, and the Holy Ghost is a distinct person. Still, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost have one divinity, equal glory, and co-eternal majesty. What the Father is, the Son is, and the Holy Ghost is. The Father is uncreated, the Son is uncreated, the Holy Ghost is uncreated. The Father is eternal, the Son is eternal, and the Holy Ghost is eternal. Yet, Nevertheless, there are not three eternal beings, but one eternal being. The Father is omnipotent, the Son is omnipotent, the Holy Ghost is omnipotent. Yet there are not three omnipotent beings, but one omnipotent being. Thus, the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. Yet there are not three gods, but one God. You know, you could just take this Athanasian Creed and just meditate on it for hours and hours, just trying to understand a little bit more and just be inspired. Uh, just a couple of more uh, sentences here. The Father is not made by anyone, nor created by anyone, nor generated by anyone. The Son is not made or created, but he is generated by the Father alone. The Holy Ghost is not made, nor created, nor generated, but proceeds from the Father and the Son. So, so there we have it. They're different in their relationship, but they are one as a being. Yes, a mystery. Not three gods, one God in three divine persons. So we must worship this as, you might say, the central and most original, you might say, of all dogmas, that this, that the three in one. And remember, we profess our faith. We give honor and worship and adoration to the Trinity whenever we say that beautiful doxology, as it's called. Doxa means glory in Greek, so we call it the doxology. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We profess our faith. We worship. It's a true prayer. There's also another way that we so often honor and adore the Holy Trinity in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. What's interesting is in the Eastern rites, they hold th three fingers together when they do that. And they start in the name of the Father and of the Son, and then they go to the right shoulder first and then to the left shoulder. 
And unfortunately, many of the Eastern rites have been in schism for centuries, but there are Eastern rites that have acknowledged the doctrine of the papacy. And it's, again, beautiful to see the richness of, of, the, of the Catholic experience where in that, in the Eastern rites, they do it with those three fingers together and then they go from right to left, we go from left to right. But it is a true prayer. One of the things I was so happy to have to have worked on this past school year is we focused for a whole quarter on teaching the children, reminding them to make the sign of the cross devoutly. And they really responded well to that. And I could just see how carefully they made their signs of the cross. Uh, uh, Obviously, it's something we have to keep working on because out of habit, we can get sloppy in our sign of the cross, but just don't let that happen. How can we be sloppy in our prayer, in our act of faith in the Holy Trinity? Remember to have, to keep, or I should say, work on that relationship with all three persons. We, yes, we think of prayer when we just uh, in prayer we go to god but also remember the heavenly father adopted us in baptism the son gave his life for our redemption and the holy ghost lives in us as the sanctifier through his gifts and the grace that he bestows yes the holy the all excuse me all three persons work together but still they are different in their relationship and we sh should have that devotion again to each person individually. And sometimes we'll be inspired in our prayers to focus more on the Father. Other times we go to Jesus, our Redeemer. And then the one that probably gets forgotten is the Holy Ghost. It's called sometimes the forgotten guest. He lives in us. During high mass with incense, remember at one point after in the, the altar is incensed, the priest, the servers are incensed, you are incensed, but not you personally. You are incensed. The presence of God is incensed within you, you see. A few words about Father's Day. Uh, to close our sermon for today, as I said earlier, what an awesome thing it is, fathers, to have that gift from God, the begetting that the father does. But it's not just that, as we know that a father does, he must also do the nurturing and raising, the protecting of his children, of his wife, of the whole family looking out for them, being the pillar, being the one who, who is the spiritual leader. I, I truly believe that the closest one to the priesthood in the family is the father because of his role of leading his family to God. And maybe piety comes more difficult for men than for women, but nevertheless... It doesn't excuse the dad from being that, showing that spiritual leadership. This is the way we're going. And that's what the father is called to, to do. He's called to, to guide and protect and protect the virtue of his family. Again, we have so many multiplying dangers to purity in our society. It's gone beyond, the sins of the flesh have gone beyond natural sins. They've gone to unnatural sins. And now we're seeing the greatest perversion of all, the transgendering of people. I just read in one of the libraries here in Spokane, just this past week, that was a featured event. These people trying to be something that they're not, reading to children, and trying to normalize the perversion of what God has created. 
So it's going to be very difficult. But again, remember, the grace of God is always greater than any problem we could ever have. Men, you have to, and fathers, you have to be men of chastity, men of virtue, men of fidelity, total fidelity to your wives in the holy state of marriage. You can't give what you don't have. And to help preserve your children, your, your children's chastity, you have to be pure yourself. So by the grace of God, be that leader, be that uplift that God has destined you to be in your family. This doesn't take anything away from that most wonderful role of motherhood that God has given to mothers. We know how great that is, that God himself had a mother, the greatest human being of all, Mary. But fatherhood, what an awesome thing. So God bless you, fathers. We support you with our prayers in this most awesome uh, role that you've been called to. And again, by the grace of God, which you often must reach out for, of course, in prayer, you will indeed achieve it. So happy Father's Day, a grace-filled day to you dads. Um, Our prayers are with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.